Welcome back to the Unpacked Cafe. I am so glad you are joining us. We have been in multiple conversations uh, over peace of mind. We've been in the series for a couple of months now, and I hope that it has been uh, helpful to you, and I hope that it has impacted your life um, in a lot of different ways. And I told you that we wouldn't be done quite yet. And so we had conversations for, with the ladies, we had conversations with the guys, we had some conversations with therapists, and we have some more conversations coming. Listen, we've had a lot going on uh, over these past few months. A lot of tragedies happen, a lot of grief happening, a lot of pain happening, mm. even in the midst of us talking about mental health. And so uh, I want today to see how can we help you process maybe grief uh, or maybe your pain or even what you're experiencing with some of the societal elements that are going on uh, in this day uh, because we're all affected by it. Even if, even if we don't know anybody that's being hurt, we are still feeling the effects of people's decisions their bad decisions, their, their trauma-informed decisions. And so we want to just unpack what's going on. And so would you join us and join in the conversation uh, and see what we got today? I've got some friends here. We have my friends Sean and Lynette Reed. Um, they are a great, great, solid couple. They yeah. do marriage counseling. They yeah. do ministry. They do all kinds of all kinds of all stuff. Kinds all of kinds. They're pastors. They're they're all the things, right? They are A ones. We have Sean and Lynette Reed. We also have to my left Kimberly Galindo, and on my front of me is Jenna Mountain. These Yay. two ladies are from Aspen House, and so uh, they are here to. We're going to talk, mm -hmm. and we are going to discuss some things that yeah. are on our hearts and hopefully on your hearts too. So. Welcome. So, so glad you all are here with us. Yes, we are. Are you ready to get into it? Yeah. We got a lot yeah. to talk Let's about today. It. Timmy, yeah. Yeah. you are here. Thank you, my I am love. Here. And I love your yellow glasses. Thank you so much. You are a ray of sunshine today. Thank you, baby. Well, you're a ray of sunshine every day. Thank you, baby. But your glasses just add a bit of mwah. Thank you, baby. <laughs> yes. I appreciate you. Yes. I appreciate you. Yeah. So let me, let me, I want to start. Okay. Um, Let's do it. Yeah, because. Get in that thing. Um, my disclaimer is I'm an empath. I feel everything. I can't turn it off. Mm -hmm. And so you talked about stuff that's going on in society, yeah. right? And in Buffalo, New York, uh, 10 people lost their lives yep. um, to a hate crime mm -hmm. um, that was very targeted. Like a person yep. went into a black neighborhood yep. mm -hmm. um, to shoot black people. Yeah. And left 10 black bodies on the ground. Mm -hmm. Older people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like these people just in a grocery store trying to live life. Like, yeah. When you go to Sprouts or Kroger, right. you're not thinking. <laughs> right. You know I may what I'm not saying? come out today. Yeah, 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 yeah. I may not come out of the bread aisle. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then, of course, what happened uh, in South Texas, south yeah. of us, um, uh, with the classroom shooting, you, you know, those were babies. Mm. babies. Babies. They were babies. Futures were robbed, yep. right? Yes. In, in this, in 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 the case of the grocery store shooting, wisdom was robbed. Yeah. Because most of those people That's were right. older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the case of these babies, the future was robbed. Our futures were robbed. It's good, yeah. Tim. So we lost wisdom, yeah. and we lost innovation we lost yeah. creativity we lost mm. leaders and doctors and lawyers yes. and presidents and mm. moms and police officers and firefighters and we don't need we don't we didn't even get to know yeah right what they were going to be yeah. That's right. it's like it's like plucking up uh, a plant at its first bud we, we don't even know what you what you were going to be mm -hmm. so um i feel all of that Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And ah, uh, I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, the, you know, when we talk about mental health, a lot of people think that it's only uh, based on what has happened to you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Like, this happened to me. I need to protect me. Self care, yeah. right? Everybody, you know what I mean? But you turn on the news, and this is going to be on every station. Yeah. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. Right. But when you go through your timeline, right? Yeah. Yep. Yes. And that's all you see. 
And all you, mm-hmm. like, I don't see no more smiling faces. No. I don't see nobody washing their dog no more. No. I don't see nobody. So this is graduation season. Yeah. Right. Yes. And everyone's, and, 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 and I'm 60 mm. individuals deep into a tribute because it's affecting all of us. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. That is a pound. Yeah. And I'm a client. I'm gonna let the I'm gonna let the professionals talk, mm-hmm. but that's a pound on your mental health mm-hmm. yeah. to have to be. It's already traumatic, mm-hmm. and it didn't even happen to you. That's right. Right. Let alone if you know somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and so that starts to chip away at you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That starts to chip away at hope. Yeah, it does. That starts to chip away at um, the goodness you feel that's in the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that starts to chip away at that perspective and you start going, maybe, maybe you don't see this as a, at a conscious level, but at a subconscious level, you're saying, I don't, it, the world ain't that good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got to take my gun to Sprouts. Yeah. Right. Right. To Sprouts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know. I got to take my gun to Whole Foods. Yeah. It's... I, I can't push my little cart down the aisle and connect eyes with somebody without going. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm. You here for eggs or you here for something else? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. right. Like, so that's where I'm starting. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. Because I feel that. Like, you yes. know what I'm saying? Like, yes. I carry that into this taping. Yeah, yeah. I carry that into, that's like, right. this is raw. This is fresh. And so it's, it's um, and I don't know these people. Right. That's right. You don't right. have to know. You don't have to know these people. No. So it's, Mm-mm. Anyway, it's hard. Uh, that's out there now. Yeah, no, so, you were it's talking hard. about it's a pound on you every scroll or yeah. every post that you see. So we just came off vacation. Yep. So we just spent a week on a cruise, completely detached mm-hmm. from social media and work. Yeah. And the first thing we see mm. is this, mm. and so we're in the best mm. space mentally and emotionally because we're reset and you know we're ready for the yeah. you know for the rest of the second half of the year. Mm-hmm. And this is what you see, and it just it pulls you back. It pulls you to a place to where it's like, I was up here, yeah. but like, dang. Yeah. 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 And so it, it it definitely is a pound regardless of where you were yeah. mentally. I think what happened for me, you know, when it took place, I was the first one in our living room. Our family was kind of sitting together and I saw it and I literally just sat there for a moment because I, because of the rapid succession of how many of these tragedies keep happening, yeah. I was thinking to myself, why am I numb? And why haven't tears begin to flow? Why am I not shocked? Mm. That was what was scary for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I didn't know what to do because I was like, you know, what are all the facts? What happened? Blah, blah, blah. It took me like a day yeah. of just thinking and processing. And finally, I looked at the pictures. Mm. Because for me, my, my heart, you know, if you look at my strengths finders, you know, report empathy is 34, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, you know, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. but for me, if I see pictures of the babies, my mind literally goes into the room. Oh, yes. And I see them in the classroom and I enact this thing in my mind. That's mm-hmm. the way it works for me. So I'm sitting there processing it. And finally, I'm in a, a, a prayer mode and I get in God's presence. And it was the ugliest, worst it was the worst prayer I probably ever prayed yeah. because it was just why. Mm-hmm. And then it was a lot of anger. Mm-hmm. And then there was like, I feel like I felt what God felt. Yeah. Mm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then I feel like I felt what the parents felt. Yeah. And then what the kids felt. So it was like, I was a ball of emotions that just came out in tears. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, and I didn't really have all the words, but what I've, found that was strange for me was it took me that long to cry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because of how my brain was like stuck. It was, I guess, traumatized at that moment. Maybe Mm -hmm. y'all can help me. But I I just, I was trying to figure out what it was. And then I kind of, afterwards, I was talking uh, to, to Lynette and I was just telling her like a biblical thought came up that in the Bible had like wailing women. Yeah, they did. Yes. actually had people who would grieve yeah, and right. wail and mourn 
And I, I have a hard time crying. Yeah, yeah. Me too. So this was... The, but I want to right now. It, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what was weird for me was it wasn't until I saw the pictures. Yes. That something in me, it, it, it became less just an incident happened. And it was all that you were saying. Yes. The, the futures that were robbed. Yep. The, the wisdom that was snatched away. Yeah. And I couldn't cry. Yeah. I was stuck until I saw it. Yeah. And 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 I want to, if you don't mind, Please, I, I no, want to read Jeremiah, y'all, because this is this is in the Bible about weeping. This is Jeremiah nine seventeen. It says, "This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says: Consider all this, and call for the mourners. Yes. Send for the women who mourn at funerals. Mm. Quick, verse mm. eighteen. Quick, mm. begin your weeping. Mm. Let the tears flow from your eyes." Mm. Hear the people of Jerusalem crying in despair. And here's what they're crying. We are ruined. We are completely humiliated. We must leave our land. Our homes have been torn down. Listen, you women, to the words of the Lord. Open your ears to what he has to say. Teach your daughters to wail. Mm. Teach one another how to lament. Mm. For death has crept in through our windows. And has entered our mansions. Lord Jesus. Listen now. It has killed off the flower of our youth. Mm. Children no longer play in the streets. And young men no longer gather in the squares. This is what the Lord says. Bodies will be scattered across the fields. Like clumps of manure. Like bundles of grain after the harvest. No one will be left to bury them. Mm. And so when he, when he goes through all of this. I'm mm. sitting here. Jesus. God said yeah. God said that. Yeah. God said it. Yeah, he did. Call for the mourners yes. and even teach your kids how to God lament. Born. Yes. And I, I realized something was wrong with me. That I guess I had, I was shaped in the iniquity of suppression. Mm. So much so, uh, it, you know, and this is kind of goofy and I know we all serious right now, but, no, 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 but we would get whoopings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we would get hit and then it'd be like, shut up. Right, right, you get right, hit, right. And it's like, bam. Be quiet. Be quiet. I'll give you something to cry for. I'll give you something. Yeah. And it was like, right? It's like, don't you understand? Cold you just effect? hurt me. Right. Now you yeah. don't want me to express the hurt that yes. I feel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. What was the purpose of this, this, this licking that I just yeah, 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 yeah. Like, wasn't it supposed to bring right. out the tears? Right, right. So right. it was like, even in discipline and correction, I was taught suppression. Yeah. yeah. And then I went to school. And if I got you know, hit on the football field or something, you're supposed to suck it up yeah. and hold in yeah. emotion, trap it in. Yeah. And so now here we have one of the most traumatic seasons in our country. And what we have been shaped in is suppression. Yeah. And biblically, yeah. we're supposed to be trained to weep and mourn yes. and lament and let it out. Yes. Yeah. And so this is good, Sean. In this, I felt like God is is teaching me that in this previous season and in this series that we've been in. In my mind, I'm like, God, help me to cry. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Because wow. there is healing in my tears. Yes. When he tells me that he keeps my... <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> It's so weird for me. It's like a it's like a dam that holds up like yeah. like water behind yeah. the thing, and finally it breaks. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But he says he keeps my tears yeah. in a jar. Yeah. If God keeps tears in a jar. Mine yeah. and yours and, and, and all I, then that means tears are precious. Yes. Because they tell a story. They do. If, if no one laments mm. for the victims, if no one weeps and mourns, even for the people we don't know, That's right. then their story, their, their victimization is, is left. And one quote that I had, it says that the memory of their trauma, the memory of their victimization is left to oblivion. Mm. And it's and not memorialized. And God has a problem with that. Mm, wow. It's for us to let victim stories, yeah. the blood cries out yeah, from the grave. Right. That's, that's right. That's right. That's right. God hates the shedding of innocent yes, blood. Yes, he does. And we should too. Yeah. Something's wrong when we don't honor and memorialize that's right. what happens to the shedding of innocent blood. And one of the ways that we do it is through our lament. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, so... So, so based great, on Sean. what I just heard you say, which was a lot profound, and it was profound. There's two tragedies. One mm -hmm. is the tragedy of innocent blood being shed. Yes, but the other 
is empty jars. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. Please. The tragedy of empty jars. Goodness. It is a tragedy. <sighs> mm. For mm. this much blood to be shed, literally by the gallons. Mm. Yeah. There's gallons of blood, and we don't even have a pint of tears. Mm. At all. Goodness. Because that's how numb we've come to this society. Yes. Somebody put out a graph of the <gasps> how many mass shootings were yeah. at like 288. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. 288? 288. Yeah. So maybe we cried over the first five. Mm. Right. Mm. But by six, we were like. We moved on. Well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's just life here. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. I just need to sit with that for I'd, a minute. I'd like to piggyback on what you shared. Um, and I'm going to keep this high level to be respectful, but we do have a personal connection with a survivor of the Uvalde shooting. And what I noticed about my own tears, which were a little delayed, is that um, if you're familiar with ring theory, which is kind of the nesting of all these different circles in your life, and the person at the center of the tragedy just receives. We just pour into that person. They are at the center of the tragedy, the center of the grief. And so because we had a personal connection with someone who had a family member, um, we were not the center of the ring. And so our default was to start to serve Mm -hmm. and do, Mm -hmm. which is not altogether wrong at all. What it took for me was um, the knowing and the discipline that I also have grief. I have a 10 year old child. Mm -hmm. Um, And my community that was the next ring out reached for me Mm. and said, are you okay? What's going on? And it's because they reached for me that I was able to reach out to get what I needed from them Mm -hmm. and then continue to pour toward the center of the circle. And um, so that's what I noticed in in my grieving process is there was, there were some things that were happening and and it dawned, oh, ring theory, I'm pouring in. I have to turn out to get what I need in this moment to do my grief work. And we don't grieve as a culture. Mm -hmm. Like all of these ceremonies and these rituals and these beautiful things that we see in scripture and honestly in some other cultures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. America's the worst. Mm-hmm. Uh, agreed. 100%. I don't, I like, we, we do not grieve. In fact, we've made it a badge of honor to not grieve. We've disciplined the emotion out of children. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And so you have an entire yeah. nation that when something bad happens, we numb out. And those feelings don't go anywhere. Right. They get yes. locked up inside of us. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I am sort of known for being a little bit punchy and, and whatnot, um, but it is... It is just like the it, the metaphor I use is you get constipated yeah. yes. emotionally. Yeah. Wow. You get backed up. And if yes. you've ever, wow. any, anybody here who, who has kids, if you've ever tried to convince a two-year-old or a three-year-old to pass a bowel movement yeah. when they have been constipated and it has been painful mm-hmm. and yes. they do not have faith in the process of it coming out, right. they're like, you have lost your mind. Yeah, right. that's true. This is going to be too much. This is too big for me. This is going to be wildly painful. I'm not going to be able to handle it. And we are walking around mm. as a bunch of adults who are still convinced that if I feel my feelings, it will be too much. I will not be able to handle it. And so I'm going to continue to stuff that back down and we're backed up and our margins are emotionally strapped and we're all kind of walking around one degree away from boiling and we mm. don't know why. And it's because we've not been taught how to do this. Yeah. Mm. It, it, one of the things in a series you did a couple of months back on Peace of Mind you were talking about the fact that eventually if you hold that stuff in, like you're saying, if you're backed up, eventually it's going to come, come out. out. Yeah. It's, it's, com- it's coming out through something. It's going to yeah. come out in a negative way. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, and that, for me, was the norm. Mm-hmm. The norm for me. And, and what, I, what I found as Lynette and I, we were talking because we were going back through our stories. Yeah. And she could speak more to kind of reframing you know, trauma that you went through in your life and different things of that nature. But as we were going back through it, I told Lynette, I was like, it was by the grace of God. It was kind of weird and somewhat dysfunctional. But Mm -hmm. where you talked about reaching out for connection, Mm -hmm. 
I didn't feel safe connecting with other people. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So praise and worship. Mm -hmm. I was a worship leader. Uh -huh. Praise and worship was my one spot mm -hmm. where I could Your be outlet. in front of people yeah. uh -huh. and in front of God yeah. and get it out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the most vulnerable that you would ever yep. find, Sean Reed, yep. was my praise and worship. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. And it was Good. part of the, part of the problem. Was, yeah. It was so dysfunctional, but it helped me. It's yeah. so weird. Mm -hmm. But part of the issue was I had the mic. That's true. I was the worship leader. Yeah. Since I had the mic, I can be as blunt That's and, right. and raw <laughs> you had the power. and open. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't have a problem being that way with God. Yeah. My issue was being this close mm -hmm. yeah. right. and being that way with people. Yeah. Because most of the people I had been around taught me, it shaped me to be silent mm -hmm. on those emotions. Right. Absolutely. To suppress them and hold them in. Yeah. You know. So do you think that society is really as hard as and calloused because they are getting used to it? Or or could we be saying maybe they're not technically hard and callous. They just don't know how to release the emotion. I think mm. it's a skill issue. Yeah. I think we as a culture do not have emotional agility. Yeah. I don't think we have emotional intelligence as yeah. a whole. I think I read a statistic that most humans stop developing at the age of 19. Mm. So we're not continuing. They stop developing their emotions at 19? They just stop developing oh, okay. and, and continuing that adult development process. So I think it's a skill set mm -hmm. that we're then taking into, or our lack of skill set that we're taking into a traumatized culture. Mm -hmm. And the work that we have to do, and you yeah. alluded to this in your series sermon, is to remember and mourn. Yeah. Yeah. But as a trauma therapist, we don't do that work until we do the skill work. Right. Yep. Right. We, we build the ring theory. We know how to reach out and, and, and pour into. We know how to name our emotions. Yep. We go in with that skill set. And so I think what people are doing is they're going limbic and they're freezing and defending and protecting because yeah. they are so overwhelmed. Yeah. It's all they know. Because we have yep. all these secondary trauma trauma survivors walking around going, yes. I don't know what yep. to do. Yeah, that's right. Let me check out. That's right. Yeah. So, that's, where, oh. I was, I was, that's where my heart went yeah. when I first heard about the incident. My, my, my first thought was the children and their families. Yeah. And then my heart went, oh, the kids that didn't get shot, but they witnessed it. Yes. Right. Yes. And when you were talking yes. about what was stolen, yes. their futures were stolen yes. too. Because oh, now it put them on a path. It's a part right. of their story. A, a life yes. of therapy and yeah. overcoming this trauma. And mm. so I just immediately thought yeah. about the, the many kids and even the teachers in the room that froze up. Yes, and right. right now are still frozen. That's sure. right. And oh, they yeah. have no way to get out. And may not have the resources to do the ideal thing. I, I'm going to go and put this out here. Yep. Like I'm all for all the professionals flourishing. If anybody knows anything about Aspen House, we take care of our people. But I will also say therapy is a privilege. So mm -hmm. true. It is. And it is true. I am it broken is. over the both mm -hmm. end of that statement. Oh, that's right. Oh, and that's right. I've watched mental health professionals, coaches, all the helping people, we're just putting them in a big bucket, fall on the sword and hurt themselves mm -hmm. because with or without words have a felt sense and awareness that healing and therapy is a privilege. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they hurt themselves. And then we have some of the highest burnout rates in our field. Yeah. Um, and I don't have a solution, which I don't like. Like bringing up stuff I don't have a solution for. Mm -hmm. But I, it is what it is. Kind of pet peeve. But this is a conundrum is. that contributes to what she is sharing because yeah. you have these babies and I'm like, play therapy tomorrow, EMDR yeah. next right. year, yeah. let's yeah. get on yeah. it because yeah. I don't want them to take it with yeah. me. Right. That's right. I want to help turn down their nervous systems. Yes. And, and there are organizations trying. Um, you know, we're both EMDR trained and we're a part of some organizations that do some humanitarian work and they will go in and do group uh, recent protocol interventions, if they can get in, but it's it's chaos. It's mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah. hard to make that happen. And then long term, we we have an access issue, mm -hmm. a major access issue, mm -hmm. and that's where my heart goes next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what's amazing to me with that thought, um, which I don't think I'm bringing a solution. I I, I think I'm complaining. Is that growing Me up? Too. Complain. It's all right. I, I guess, I guess we can do that up, today. Though, right now, I could find a little league mm. soccer team, football team, basketball team, baseball team to bring my kids to. Even in the hood where I grew up, 
we had those. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. And and you can somehow you're gonna muster up some football pads and some cleats and yeah. you're gonna be playing out there on that field. Yeah. So it's like there's a value that's put on and has been put on sports, you know, and certain forms of academic, you know, uh, uh learning or whatever the case may be. But this area right here, yeah, somehow, some way the narrative has to change. I know we point to like mental health, but like for me, it's even in, I'm going to jump back to that, to that line. Yeah. I feel like one of the things that I want to go back and look at our kids and I'm like, did I teach you to lament? Mm -hmm. Because if nothing else, yeah. if I don't get those services mm -hmm. and if I can't, I walked in the, the room, you know, when the incident happened and I went to my wife afterwards the next day and I literally just walked up to her and I said, I'm not good. Yeah. 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 I can't deal with it. Yeah. I was like, something's wrong in my head and I'm not good. Yeah. And yeah. it wasn't for her to fix it, but it was for me to release it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was for Say you it. to be known. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and I don't know if, if, if our issue is we haven't been taught the skill. If nothing else, we, we need to at least help our kids feel safe enough to be able to come to us yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and, and put your phone down and turn off the television yes, and yes. sit down with your kids or your spouse or something and just look at a friend and be like, not just what's happening. Because what's happening is garbage. Like if you ask <laughs> me what's right. happening, it is, like you say, it does look it's pretty right. evil. Yeah. We're just, yeah. we're aware yes. of the evil. Now there's beauty in the world, yeah. sure. but when you, when you get that flash, that it's whiff late. of evil and you yeah. see it, yeah. it, it may not be the moment to like ignore that. It's the time to mourn, but That's we right. don't grieve as those who don't have hope. Yeah. That's right. So how do we do that? I need to look in the face of another human being because it's not good for me to be alone. Yeah. That's right. right. I need to be able to look you yeah. in the eyes yeah. And be able to let you hear me okay. and, and, and see me so that I am, I am aware of the fact that I'm safe yeah. and that, that it's okay. Yeah. And if we can't even have that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Then we're literally trapped in a world where we're alone with those thoughts of the evil. That's right. And it's on repeat and replay and it never comes out. Yeah. I, I had, um, uh, when I was uh, probably... Somewhere between 9 and 11, uh, I was driving down the street. I wasn't driving down the street. My dad was driving down the street. We were, we were in the car. I mean, maybe. And uh, Very progressive we were, family. As we, were, <laughs> as we were driving down the street, I was in the back seat. I saw a kid uh, running through his yard with two pomegranates in his hand. And... I don't know. We were only doing like maybe 30 or 40 miles an hour. It's a residential area. So I'm fascinated. I'm looking at this kid and I'm following him to the point that um, I track him to I turn around in the car. Mm. Like I'm fully turned around in the car. Mm. Well, he darted into the street mm. oh. and the truck that was behind us <sighs> mm. hit him. Impact was blunt force. He hit the ground. His skull cracked open. His brain came out. Mm. Yep. I saw this. Mm -hmm. It was about 4.30 in the evening on a Tuesday, I believe, or Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And I think three and a half hours later, we were at Disneyland. <sighs> wow. And we were riding Space Mountain mm. 22 times in a row. Because mm. it was Tuesday during a school year. Yeah. And my parents were like, put them on a ride, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Let Distract them. Yeah. You, you know, we don't know what to do with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, the day that all these children lost their lives, the Dallas Mavericks played, played. the Golden State Warriors. Yes. Mm. We talked and it was that. a sold-out mm. arena. Yeah. Oof. And we rooted for our team. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's absolutely no different than what my parents did to me when I was 11. Mm -hmm. Let's just distract ourselves. Yes from the pain of this. And I was processing as we were all talking, when is the last time the nation stopped to mourn? Right. The 10 seconds. 9-11. 9 9-11. 9-11. 9-11. Collectively. 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 That's what I'm talking about. 9-11 yeah. is the last yeah. time I remember. 9-11. September 11th of 2001? Yes. 
was the last time the nation mm -hmm. stopped together. Stopped together. Yeah. And it took terrorists flying planes into a building yes. mm. and 3,000 and so some odd people right. dying. Oof. So that's our watermark. Ugh. What, what we're, this is what I'm processing real time. Yeah. Yes. What that behavior tells me is it has to be that bad for us to value life, that's ourselves. That's what I'm getting at. Our emotions. Yeah, 19 people ain't enough. No. 10 people is not enough. If 3,000, yeah. we will all mourn right. yeah. over yeah. 3,000 people losing their lives. Right. But it's got to be videotaped. Mm. Yes. We got to see it. Mm -hmm. If we just read about it afterwards, we, oh. Yeah. Yeah. What's for dinner? So it's just a, we that's really a lot. struggle. What that's bringing up for me, Tim, is like, we don't know how to attune. No, we do not. No. Like to get in and crawl in someone else as well. Like you you said, I, like I have to watch, it has to be on video. I have to see it for myself. And, mm. and, and I don't want anybody to mishear me. Like when we see visuals, when we see videos, they do trigger things inside of us. They evoke emotion. I would even make the argument when you're talking about the worshiping, like music has a really poignant way of like getting at us and pulling it out. So it's not that that's, sure wrong or bad or anything like that. But because we are so disconnected, like floating heads. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm. That mm. we don't know how to, I'm telling you what happened to me and I'm going to go <gasps> crawl in the well with you and mm. sit with you in that and get attuned with you. We're overstimulated. You know, th that reminds me, um, because of social media, the world can be brought together a couple months ago, or maybe a couple weeks ago, we have some friends of us, an organization called FIRM, um, Fellowship of Israel-Related Ministries. Mm -hmm. And so um, during a couple months ago, Israel stopped mm -hmm. to um, pay homage mm -hmm. to the, the Holocaust and the mm -hmm. Holocaust survivors. Mm -hmm. yeah. Day of Remembrance. They, yeah, Day of Remembrance. And, you know, they videotaped it and they posted it. But the entire nation, nation stops. paused. Mm -hmm. And they paused every year mm -hmm. on the same day yeah. at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because they care. Because they mm -hmm. care. But it, it pulls back to what you were saying, Sean. Now their children and their children's children no. remember. They don't and forget. honor. And they, yeah, and they get it. And so <laughs> here in the U.S., yeah. like you said, it has to be three, 4,000 people to lose their lives in order for the nation to stop. But we only stop for that moment, mm -hmm. right? For the, the month or two, but then afterwards... We move on. Yeah, we move on. Yeah, I'm thinking about like the anniversary of 9-11. And I do remember for those first few years, there was, there was remembering and stopping and, you know, Never memorials forget. and ceremonies. Yeah. But I don't know if I... Mm, the last... Yeah. Last handful, it just starts to... We have a very out of sight, out of mind... Well, America Society. Is, is a very, um, we don't take the time. We don't lament. We don't have a, our nation is not a people of culture and, and values. And what I mean by that is, to your point, Lynette, of in Israel or this, you know, they remember. Mm -hmm. It's very biblical. You know, back in the Bible days, if you read, they're always putting up an altar or putting a marker down yes. or remember the memories. Lord here yeah. or mm -hmm. this is what happened. And America doesn't have that sort of history, mm -mm. right? But we look bad if we don't do something that's tragic, mm -hmm. right? So we have to make, so we, we build a memorial, but then here we've done this, so we've built this memorial. Right, we built it. Yeah, we built it. Go see it whenever you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go yeah. see it when you're touring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It becomes a tourist yeah. attraction yeah. and less of a memorial. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? And so uh, people then now lament in their own way mm -hmm. that they know. Privately. Why. Yes, right? So I read an article the other day, um, or it could have been a news clipping, um, how I think they said about 800 teachers are refusing or not wanting to come back to school next, next year. year. Yeah. yeah, in Texas. Right? Wow. Well, what is that? We could say that's fear, but we could also say they're lamenting mm -hmm. in their actions. Mm -hmm. Right? They're, they're sharing in their actions of like, mm -hmm. what does this come to? And because we don't do things the way we know how to because of suppression or mm -hmm. or whatever it is, it may not come out in our tears, 
but it's going to come out in an action, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some way, shape, or form. Yeah. We have 800 teachers, yeah. right? That's saying something. So let's see what that affects if they don't come back. Mm. More features. Right. Right? Being robbed, mm -hmm. right? Not necessarily the teacher's fault. Right. Right? But but now there's more more abandoned kids, right. abandoned education, yep. abandoned learning, yeah. right? Because you said it was a skill set. That's what you said, right? Mm -hmm. It's a skill. So now how do we now teach teach them to do if we don't have the teachers? Yeah. And we don't have the teachers because everything is mental health. I, somebody, somebody, uh, a friend of mine posted the other day and said, she just she was being honest. She said, is everything mental health or when is it demons? Right. Mm. At right. what point is it just evil? It's just when, evil. You know, when is it demons? And so when you're in the church, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's always a spiritual where we're taught, hey, th there's an enemy out there. Mm. And there is. Yes. Right? There is an enemy. Um, and so church, people who are in church, often we can say, hey, that's, that's the enemy. And then on a clinical side, you know, well, that's a mental health because yeah. that there's something disconnected in here. Mm -hmm. Right. And but the enemy uses people. Mm -hmm. Right. That's correct. And the you enemy know? influences the and mind. And the enemy influences the mind. I'm, I'm stuck on a visual that you gave. You know, I see everything in pictures. Um, when you talked about these uh, floating heads, yeah. the, the only thing that I saw was, you know, people that are disembodied. Yeah, yeah. If you're just a floating yeah. head, yeah. you're cut off from your own body. Because well, emotions are an embodied experience correct. by definition. That's a textbook. Yeah. 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 So, so if, if I'm disconnected from my own body, I cannot attune to yours. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. I can't attune to your body if I no. won't get in tune with mine. Yeah. Right? And so um, that picture is just very, very vivid in my mind right now. Oh yeah, because it it's like, and and I think it's uh, I I think it's very very symbolic that most of the people that we see on TV are just heads. Mm. Well, mm. and it gets exponentially Head. worse. <laughs> well, yeah, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. No, let me go back to something you said. You talked about like you needing to do this with others. Yes. We are um, not just theologically, but like biologically and psychologically created for connection and community. And one of Correct. my favorite authors on this is Kurt Thompson. And he talks about, so we're talking about attachment, right? How do I attune and attach to others? Which is not just what happens with babies. It's not just what happens with couples, but it's what happens with everybody. Yeah. I, this is my business partner and we have an attachment connection. Mm -hmm. And when you are disconnected mm -hmm. and can't get in touch with your emotions, which is the language of connection, um, you can't do attachment. And, and our neurobiology does not develop to its greatest capacity and potential outside of connection with another brain. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I need your brain. Right to heal my brain, grow my brain, for my neural network to take off and do all these connections so I can be the greatest version of me. I can't do that By solo yourself. brain. Yeah. No, you cannot. It has to be done. So if I can lend some hope to connect some of the conversation, mm -hmm. we can change this yes. if we will teach our children mm -hmm. some of these skills. And they're not hard. Yep. I do it with my six-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. Where are your eyes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Where are your eyes? Yeah. Yeah. That's what so are good. you feeling? Yep. Where is it in your Where body? Where is it in your body? Yep. Yeah. Oh, you're sad. Yep. Okay. And I just bear witness yep. and hold space. Yeah. You don't have to have a mental health degree to do that. That's right. Good. Oh, mm -hmm. you're sad. Let's lament. Right. Yes. What a gift to the next generation. Absolutely. Yeah. On. yeah is attunement yeah. and attachment. And, you know, part of that is doing our own work, right? Yeah. And yeah, getting absolutely. in touch with our own selves. Yeah. But right. just yeah. where is your body and your eyes? Yeah. And what are you feeling? Yeah. Th that's a solution. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think about that and I'm like, thank you for, for saying that. I, I, I have several thoughts. I'll let the same say time. Them, and say I'm them. Throw to, them all out there. <laughs> I, I feel like the one of the issues... I love that. I don't know, as marriage and family pastors, we connect with couples all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about family dynamics and all that other stuff. One of the biggest issues I find is like, people don't make time for that. No. 
it's not a priority. You know what I'm saying? Right. That means right. I would have to, there's a point in my day yeah. where I stop and look at my kids in the face. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and growing up, and I'm, it's, you know, do your chores, do your homework, in, which is necessary. Sounds right? like We're holding them accountable. Right you know yeah. what I mean? You know, <laughs> yep. do, do the things, <laughs> yep. get it done, and that's normal. I don't know for me, I'll speak from my experience and for yeah. my siblings, that we had a moment where it was like, let's sit down. Yeah. See you. Yeah. I see you. I see let, you. Let, me, let me hear you. Like if if mm -hmm. time, quality time, mm -hmm. yeah. if if that for me is how I'm going to develop that emotional intelligence and social awareness and self-awareness, like I didn't have that. Yeah. And yeah. it takes a lot of intentionality That's right. to figure it out. That's I right. think when we start talking about America and how do we shift it, um, that would be a huge asset to add into every home. But if the family dynamic has been so deconstructed and, so broke, right. and broken down, yep. right. then then part of the, the work of the church is harder. That's right. Because it's like literally, oh, absolutely. you know, we're, we're trying to make up for yep. what's supposed to be a priest in each home. Yes. yes. Already. It, it's supposed to be this structure where God is at the center of, right. of a community that's, yep. right. that's its own synagogue. Yep. You know yep. what I'm saying? 100%. And then, you know, and then yep. we come together on Sunday and yeah. it's like this big old celebration. Yes. Or mourning, right? Yes. Absolutely, yes. yes, yes. Uh, or or confession. Yeah, 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 yeah. confession is a command, and yep. it's needed yes. for healing. Yeah, that's right? right. That was one of my favorite lessons that you were teaching on in that last one. Like God, He wants us to confess to one another. That's right. And I'm I'm not kidding y'all. Everything that I grew up with was don't confess it, keep it in. Keep yep. your mouth closed. Yep. If something happened, we ain't gonna talk about it. Right. You know, <laughs> if you're right. hurting, suck it up. Right. So everything, I, in my brain, the way I'm labeling it is the iniquity of suppression because yeah. It's, yeah. It, it literally shaped That's right. and oh, totally. made normal yeah. mm -hmm. the worst way yeah. of processing pain and, and, and trauma. So now, I would hope that you know, even with, with my wife, Lynette, I, I want to make sure that I'm slowing down enough mm -hmm. to be able to give her the space yeah. to like look at me in the eyeball and be be feel safe enough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? To be yeah. able to just say, this is what I'm processing. Here's where I'm at. And I don't have to try to fix it necessarily, no. but I am yeah. trying to be present. Yeah, absolutely. That's all I'm saying. You know? Yeah, no, that's yeah. great. Thank you everyone for watching this week. We are going to continue this conversation. So please meet us back here next week, Wednesday at 7 p.m. You don't want to miss. Welcome my Unpacked family. Listen, I have an announcement for you. This announcement has been a long time coming. I want you to tell your friends. I want you to tell everybody that you know, because finally, in the history of ever, I mean, in the history of ever, there was a history. For the first time this year, 2022, Embassy City Church will have their first women's conference. Yay! Yay! It is about time, I know it, and I am glad that this year, September 9th and 10th, we are finally doing our first ever women's conference. So be prepared, we're going to have a blast. Tell your friends and I will see you soon.